Following the end of the Second World War, the defeated German army was disbanded by the victorious Allies. However, the ever-rising tensions with the Soviet Union forced the Western Allies to reconsider this decision. The new West German army, known as the Bundeswehr, was formed in 1955, and soon after, a large rearmament process was initiated. In the case of the armored reconnaissance units, the Bundeswehr requested the acquisition of small tracked armor reconnaissance vehicles. This came in the form of the Schützenpanzer Kurs infantry fighting vehicle short. Ironically, these were developed by the French company Hotchkiss, as the Germans lacked the industrial capacity to do so on their own. The reconnaissance vehicle was offered as part of a family of vehicles, ranging from infantry fighting vehicles to ambulances. Among the vehicles offered was a reconnaissance tank destroyer, which would be known as a Speerpanzer 1C or SB-1C for short. While initially this project was seen as a good solution, it quickly turned into a flawed vehicle with numerous problems which ultimately led to its cancellation. The story of the Schützenpanzer began back in 1946. The French airborne troops requested armored fighting vehicle support with airdrop capability. The French Ministry of Defense transferred the requirements to a few different companies, and eventually proposals were presented in August 1947. In the end, Hotchkiss was chosen as the winner. At some point, the protection requirements increased and the airdrop capability of the vehicles became less important. Hotchkiss built prototypes of both cargo carriers and troop transports. The vehicles were tested in France, North and South Africa and the United States, after which the vehicle received favorable recommendation in 1952. The French placed an order for 100 pre-series vehicles, but nothing came of the whole endeavor. This was where the newly founded Bundeswehr came in. The Germans were looking for a new vehicle to equip their reconnaissance units with, and in September 1955, the cargo and APC versions were presented to the German officials. The subsequent trials were promising enough for the Germans to order the cargo version and to request five additional types to be designed. These were an infantry fighting vehicle armed with a 20mm cannon, an 81mm mortar carrier, an observation vehicle, a radar carrier, and an armored ambulance. The combat weight of the vehicles was increased from 7 to 8.4 tons, the amount of road wheels was increased from 8 to 10, and the armor shape was redesigned. In practice, the vehicles were completely redesigned from the original basis to meet German requirements. Production began in 1958 with a total production run of 2,374 vehicles between 1958 and 1962, with the vehicle surfing up to the 1980s in the radar configuration. While these were integrated into the new German army, it was quickly noted that something with a much heavier punch was needed. The ever-rising threat of a potential war with the Soviets meant that the West German army would have to tackle a large number of tank formations that would inevitably clash with the forward reconnaissance units. Having a small, fast, and quick-firing anti-tank vehicle could give a necessary edge to fight against these effectively. While the precise year is not clear, it is generally believed that the French presented the SB-1C to the Bundeswehr in 1955. The German army staff were quite enthused with the notion of offering their reconnaissance units with greater anti-tank firepower. It was thus a likely possibility that the German staff considered it as a replacement for the M41, which was, at that point, used as a reconnaissance tank. While the general performance of the vehicle was evaluated positively, the tank turret was seen as too cramped. In response, the Germans asked Rheinmetall to design and develop a completely new turret in 1957. The new turret incorporated several fundamental changes, most notably the use of the Belgian 90mm Macar gun instead of the French 90mm D921. Why this decision was made is unknown, but it is a possibility that the French simply refused to export their gun without exporting the turret as well. The 90mm Macar was a bit of an odd gun as very little is known about it. The turret was designed with a multi-loading device which was some form of a magazine system, not to be confused with an autoloader. The vehicle was delivered for testing in 1961. The original French SB-1C weighed 9.5 ton. It was a small vehicle, being 4.9 meter long, 2.3 meter wide, and 2.07 meter tall. It had a crew of three, consisting of the commander slash loader, the gunner, and the driver. The German version was a bit heavier at 10.2 ton and had similar dimension with the extension of being slightly taller at 2.39 meter. 
It had a similar crew layout except that the gunner might also have been the commander. Both the French and German hulls were practically the same. The hull was armored with a 10mm upper front plate and a lower front plate of 15mm. The driver's frontal plate with the bulge was 10mm thick and the sides and rear were 8mm thick. The top was 15mm thick and the floor ranged from 15mm to 8mm at the rear. The driver's position was clearly distinguished by the large bulge welded on the upper front plate. This bulge contained the mountings for three periscopes and a rotating sliding hatch for the driver. The driver steered with two tiller bars and had to shift gears manually. A fire extinguisher was located to the front right of the driver. The clutch pedal was located on the left, the brake on the right, and the accelerator pedal to the right of the brake pedal. The instrument panel was located to the left of the driver, and a floor hatch was located underneath the seat if needed. The engine was located to the right of the driver, with the air intake located on the top hull on the front right. The SB1C was powered by a 195 horsepower Talbot Hotchkiss petrol engine, coupled to a 5-speed forward and 1-speed reverse transmission. This gave the vehicle a maximum speed of 58 km per hour and 8.3 km per hour in reverse. The vehicle had a 355-liter fuel tank, which gave the vehicle an operational range of about 360 km. It used a torsion bar suspension with five road wheels on each side and utilized shock absorbers and rubber stops to limit the travel of the suspension arms. The drive sprocket was located at the front and the idler wheel was at the rear. Each track was further supported by three guide wheels. Two separate turrets were available. One was an early form from the French H90 turret which would be used on the AML90. The other was developed by Rheinmetall at the request of the Bundeswehr, was larger and came with a new main armament. The French turret was armored with 15mm of welded steel plates at the front and had a decreasing thickness of 15 to 10mm on the side from front to rear. The rear had a thickness of 10mm and the top had a thickness of 8mm. This armor would protect against small caliber rounds. The Commander Schlossloader, positioned on the left side of the turret, had four periscopes available, while the gunner on the right had the same available along with a single main firing periscope for a total of five periscopes. In the middle of the turret top, behind the commander and gunner hatches, was the outlet for the ventilation system. The coaxial machine gun was located on the left side of the main gun. The antenna of the radio was located behind the gunner and attached to the rear side plate. Two smoke launchers were mounted on each of the rear of the turret side plates for a total of four. The German turret developed by Rheinmetall was manufactured out of mild steel. While its armor thickness is unknown, it was likely somewhat similar to the French one and is not thought to have offered more than protection against small arms. The German turret was octagonal shaped and welded. The vehicle had a distinct gun shield with a direct fire telescope on the right side of the gun and the coaxial machine gun to the left. On both sides of the gun shield were two protrusions with small sliding hatches, the purpose of which is unknown. The gunner, located on the right, had four periscopes and what seems to be a main telescope for the main gun on the right of the front periscope. The commander Schlesloder on the left only had two periscopes pointing to the side of the vehicle. This seems strange and might suggest that, in the German turret, the gunner was also the commander and the loader only had loading duties, in contrast to the French layout. Both crewmen had relatively small hatches. The two rear side plates had three smoke launchers each and the rear plate had two smoke launchers and an antenna attachment. The two versions used the French 90mm D921 and the Belgian 90mm Macar guns respectively. Of these guns, the French gun was both superior in performance and ammunition loadout. For example, the French gun could fire four different types of munitions which included heat, HE, heat TP, and smoke rounds. The Macar gun was limited to heat and HE. The Belgian gun was inferior performance-wise in both muscle velocity and effective range. The Belgian heat round only had a muscle velocity of 630 meter per second compared to the 750 meter per second of the French gun. This made the Macar gun less accurate and gave it an effective range of 1200 meter as opposed to 1500 meters. The HE round was even more problematic due to the 338 meter per second muscle velocity as opposed to the French 650 meter per second. The French vehicle had a total of 50 rounds of 90mm ammunition, 
of which an estimated 24 could be found in the turret, while the German version was said to stow around 40, of which potentially 18 in the magazine loading system. The French SP-1C also came with a 7.5mm machine gun as opposed to the MG-42 for the German variant. While the SB-1C was initially a promising concept, all hopes for its introduction were soon dashed after initial testing was undertaken. Numerous defects with the whole vehicle quickly came to light. The multi-looting magazine system showed significant deficiencies and the gun used was already becoming outdated in the 1960s for the European theater. Due to the vehicle weighing 10.2 ton, which a drivetrain could somewhat handle, the suspension was on the edge of being overloaded. The overloaded suspension meant that no upgrade in armament could be carried out and that any weight increase would likely lead to an intensive wear on the suspension system. The lack of armor and limited gun performance at range also meant that the vehicle could only properly carry out its tank-destroying tasks from prepared ambushes and would most likely be destroyed in any other scenario if it faced an armored opponent. For these reasons, the project was rejected by the Bundeswehr and the prototype was stored at the Koblenz Tank Museum. This concludes our video and the SP-1C. What do you think of this vehicle? Was it doomed from the start? Or should they have continued its development? Did it have a place on the battlefield? Or is it good that it was confined to history books, museums, and video games? Share your opinion in the comment section. If you haven't done so already, we invite you to subscribe to stay updated on future content. If you'd like to contribute further, consider supporting us on Patreon or Paypal. Your contributions help us create more engaging videos. Until next time, stay focused and stay tuned.